Well, hello my fellow car modelers. How are you doing today? I thought I'd put out this video. Um, actually, this is a really old video that I'm about to show you. It's something that I worked on a while ago. As a matter of fact, I did this back at my old house. It's been that long ago. So I want to say in the neighborhood of two and a half to three years ago, I had this brainstorm. It's kind of an idea that I've had for a long time and it kind of engineered it in my head and one day I wanted to take a crack at it because I want to do a particular car that's been kind of gnawing at me for many years. I thought, you know, I, I'll just show you guys this. So everything that I'm going to show you what I'm working on, this is not a build video, this is a showing you what I'm doing with this roll cage for a NASCAR. There's a couple things I'm going to hit, a couple points that I've covered in past videos about my NASCAR builds and things and, you know, stuffs. Anyways, uh, about taking the chassis from, like, what they say, the GM chassis and the Ford chassis from the Monogram kits, now the Silvinos kits. They don't have the Ford Thunderbirds out yet. Don't start flipping out and bug bugging Jim and all them over there. There's no time when they're going to be having those Ford kits out. It'll be a while. So at this point in time, if you have them or you find them online or something, you might want to pick them up. They're really outstanding kits. Some of my favorites, as I've said in the past. I take the Ford chassis, which is a representation of a Banjo Matthews chassis, and I did this in a video. I'll put it at the end in a link if you haven't seen that video. How you can swap those chassis around, because lots of times, you know, those weren't specific to makes of cars. Those chassis were specific to chassis builders and what the race team wanted to use. And sometimes race teams would have he have Banjo Matthews, which were rear steer. I'm not going to get into that. Again, go watch my video. I kind of explain that stuff. There's the Banjo rear steer, and there's the Laughlin chassis front steer. Some teams would use both, and you could have a Chevy body or an Oldsmobile or a Ford Thunderbird, and it, 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 it just didn't matter. What I'm building is an Oldsmobile, the Buddy Baker Crisco Oldsmobile from the 87 season. I'm doing it as from some pictures I could tell, I believe they ran both Banjo and Laughlin chassis. I actually have these pictures that were given to by a friend of mine of shop pics that were taken a long time ago. And you can see there's a Banjo Matthews chassis. So I want to do this car with a Banjo Matthews chassis. There's little fitment issues I had. Not really. I mean, they fit in there good. I'm sorry, but there's fitment issues in the fact of how I wanted the roll bar to fit into like the A-pillars. And I've had this idea in my head engineered of how to get that look of the A-pillar down bars from the roll bars, the roll cage, kind of blended into the A-pillars of the body. Seeing that look. And I want to get that look on these models. And I figured out a way to do it. And I'm going to show you in this. You better hold on to your lug nuts because this is, this is going to be fun for you NASCAR guys. I think you guys are going to like this. So here it is, the 1987 Oldsmobile Delta 88. Just love the looks of this car. And as you can see, I got my mock-up banjo chassis under there that I showed you in the last video. And it fits really good. But like I showed you in that video, I don't like how the roll cage is. So I got an idea of what I'm going to do to make that roll cage fit. I'm not going to be using this chassis. I've got a fresh one right here that I'm going to work with. And I want to do something a little different. Something that's also been on my mind for a lot of years to do with these NASCAR models. And as we can see with them, and you can see up in here, they, they did a simulated A-pillar kind of bar here. But then you've got your chassis bar in there that comes on, on that's a part of the whole chassis that pops into the body and this bar right here is actually supposed to be a part of the roll cage but they did that that was an update that nascar did in the mid 80s that they just added it to the bodies monogram did just to kind of get get the cars a little more up to date like but the one thing that was very prevalent on cars starting probably in the 70s they started doing is is you didn't have this separate bar a pillar bar coming down it and it was always somehow connected to the a pillar it was for strengthening up the whole structure of the car and the body and getting the body a part of the chassis so that's kind of what monogram replicated here but it, it's it's not exact and what I've always wanted to do is I've wanted to build a 
model of a NASCAR Cup car that had that look where the, the upper portions of the roll cage were actually kind of molded up into, they weld plates and everything and mold them up into the body, connecting them to the body. So how I figured I'm going to do that trick when I'm putting together the chassis for this car is I'm going to take the upper portion of the roll cage and I'm going to actually glue it in and mold it into the body. And what my hope is, is that, because it will get painted with the body, that when I place it down on the chassis, it'll all fit down and, and you'll get the proper look. And it'll all look like one piece. That is my goal. And uh, I just wanted to sh talk to you guys about that and show you. And uh, let's, uh, let's see what we can do with it. And already you can see, with just the stock chassis setup, this car will really have a great stance. I might even get it a little lower when I start building the chassis for this car. But this this chassis fits really, really good into this body. And uh, I'm going to get the look that I'm really looking forward to. Now this is the angle of the car that has just been gnawing in my head. And I know you guys know what this is like. You know, you just get this idea about a model in your head. And there's just a certain view of you might have seen a car on the road or in a magazine or on a video. And I've been watching a lot of old NASCAR races on youtube it's just <laughs> that's just it's so awesome to be able to watch these races whenever we want now and this look right here is what has just attracted me to this car i just really love how this whole air dam all straight down but i loved it when the cars had a curve to the body before they in the 90s started doing the slab sides and i know it was better for aerodynamics but to me that's when my interest in nascar really fell off. I, I, I love this look and even the Luminous had this shape, the Thunderbirds, but this car just had this look right here is what's been in my head and so I just want to create it. Here's a shot from the rear and uh, I, again you can really see that, that curve of the body. I just love that. This is going to be a great combination. I think I can really make this work and uh, we're just going to have a whole loads of fun with it. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this center piece out, the, the main cage, out of this mock-up chassis, like I showed you in that other video, how I kept it separate. And we are going to see exactly how it fits. I had figured exactly where it places when the chassis is in there, and pretty much how it works out is, see this ridge right here? You can see that right there. If you put the basically right here this edge of that will go in there and that's how that is exactly how the stock chassis fits into this body and we want to fix that and again what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the upper portion basically the entire uh, halo of the roll cage I'm going to bond it to the body and have it all in there and it'll get painted with the body and hopefully when I put it onto the chassis they'll all meet up and you won't won't see a difference. Pretty much know where we go with that and here are my ideas that I figured. Let's get this out of the way. So I have the driver side here. If I fit that in there and I want that now to basically about like that. That's what we want to achieve. And in order to achieve that, I am going to have to extend this part. This is the part of the roll cage that goes behind the driver. This is where the driver would sit, and this would be behind his head, kind of over his head, behind his head. And then the two bars that go over the windows on the sides, they go like that. So this is the main hoop is what that's called. I also have the main hoop out of, which actually goes this way, main hoop out of the Laughlin chassis, which was in all the GM cars, the, the, the stock chassis that came with this body. It's longer, and what we'll show you is in a pre-built Laughlin chassis roll cage out of the GM cars, you can see how it fits in there, and it's a little bit wider but I even want to make it a little more wider I think well let's see what do we got here you can see it, it fits in there a little better and I could just take this roll cage and put it in the rest of the banjo chassis and that would do 
good. I showed that in that other video, but I just want to do something a little different. I want to use all of the banjo roll cage and just extend it outward. So what we will do is I'm going to, that's basically how it'll fit in there. I'm going to construct the whole cage before I separate this, this, this portion of it. We're going to put the whole cage together. So I've got this much of the cage put together. Um, just so we can get it kind of placed into the body. Again, I cut off the top portion of the main hoop here because we're going to extend these to be wider and of course this part wider also. I haven't decided whether I want to use kit roll cage or make my own with some stock, but we can get that thing lined in there pretty good and you can see already how it's kind of meeting where we want it to be but I want to stretch this out a little bit farther probably about like that and uh, I think what we'll do is we'll keep this upper portion um, let's see here what I eventually want to do is I want to cut it here here there and there and mount it into the body like glue it into place here and it will be a part of the body at that point. And then what I can do is on the A-pillar down bars here is I will bring sheet plastic in there and in here to connect to that like they are on the real cars. And uh, we should get that look we're looking for. That's about where we're at right now. So I'm going to get everything sized correctly for these two bars up there. And uh, let's move on. So to start with, I'm going to take the main hoop out of the GM chassis, the Laughlin chassis, because this bar is a lot longer, and let's see if that will give us our width. So I'm going to cut it right there and there. As you can see, it's got a bit of a kick up, so it shapes into the, the roof of the car. So. With this in place, I'm going to see if I can just get that to fit up in there and see what happens. See if that's going to give us enough. It kind of doing a little bit of a test fit. I don't know if you guys can see it. It looks like it will. It will work. So let's glue that piece on see what we get. Now something that I'm going to do so it kind of fits in place. This is actually done in real row cage applications what's called fish mouthing. So what I want to do is if you can see here um, this isn't going to fit nice right onto that piece of the roll cage so I want to kind of give up what's called a fish mouth so that it'll fit right into the roll cage portion and I just take a file that's a, a rat tail file and just kind of use my fingers as kind of a jig or a guide and just kind of get a rounded edge in there so that it'll fit to the roll cage. This is a useful technique and you can see right there I've kind of got now a spot that will nicely fit into that piece of roll cage right there and uh, this is something you want to do whenever you like you're building scratch building your own roll cage or anything like that you're going to want to do fish fish mouthing onto your roll bars so that they meet good together and there you go so let's get this glued in today I'm using my CA glue with some accelerator so we can get that glued real quick. A little drop of glue just all into place. Drop the accelerator on there boom and it's there for good. And then the other side get that into place. Dang. There. Done all in place. We'll get that connected up there somehow here shortly. Might have to add a little bit of plastic in there to get that to extend because it has stretched this out. Let's see how it fits into the body. And here we go. Fight me a little. Alright, 
so as you can see when I get it into place oh yeah it's definitely across there a lot lot farther I think I'm happy with that that's gonna work good and it's helping me get these pushed out farther let's go ahead and add a piece across here on the front the windshield bar so I found a piece of straight stock that was left over from me fabricating a roll cage in the past um, this is a stick of evergreen it's roughly about the same circumference as the kit cage so this should do the job we want to stretch this out a little farther so probably the best thing to do is let's put it back into the car and what I'm gonna do if we get it stretched out that far right into where we want it Again, here's where I want to have a third hand, but I'm going to go ahead and mark the spot in the car where I want the bar to go across. On this side, it's going to be right there. And on this side, let's get this totally into place correctly, right there. So, this spot right here and this spot right here is where I want my bar to be so I can basically get it cut and fitted to size and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I want to kind of give it like the way the kit one is and you can see how much longer we need to go we roughly got to go about that far so we got to make it that much longer and I want to kind of get that curving going so this is going to be pretty tricky so here's a longer piece of evergreen rod and I'm going to show you why you need to do that. In order to get a kick down, you got to kind of do it a little farther in. So I want to replicate this shape just longer. So it's got a slight bend and a slight kick, kick down. So I think I've showed this before. I never seem to have a lighter that has an adjustment. I wish I had an adjustment on that. It's usually better you want to get it as low as possible. This is my way of doing it. I know there's a bunch of you that have your ways. That's fine, whatever works for you. But I just like using a lighter and putting it up against the plastic that I'm bending. So I'm gonna take it and I'm just going to kiss it a little with the flame and just give it a little tweak down. Of course, this is the easy part because you know it's the first bend. Using where I want the next bend, I'm going to place this in here to get an idea of where it goes. Right about here is where the bend is, so I want to have it equally, so I'll put a mark here where I want this to bend. So now the trick is to get the exact same bend over here. I have my mark there, and this mark right here is roughly right in the middle of my bend. I'm going to heat this up a bit and try to get this all you just need to just touch this plastic really quick with the flame. It just needs a little bit of heating and it'll form. That's what I love about this evergreen. And I am using solid. It's not tube. I like to use the solid because you just have a little more plastic to put the heat to. Right here, a little farther, and we will... can't seem to get a mark on there. And this will get us to kind of have some plastic to work with and we can shape it. And we're also going to fish mouth it. See how this fits to the body. You can see it's a little bit farther. Okay. So that's what we want. And then now that we got that, I want to do from here to here this this is an old mark let's not look at that we want to get a measurement that's exactly in between these two and that's where we're going to kick the bar up a little bit to kind of go with the curvature of the roof I'm going to take the two turn ends kind of move it to where they're kind of going a little bit back and then I'm going to I'm just going to put a little pressure on it and just put my thumbnail right at the mark so it's the center of the bend and I'm just going to give it a little tweak ever so such. Now here's something that I do sometimes because this will eventually bend back. I'll, now that it's got kind of a tweak to it, 
I'll just let it heat up a bit, not too far, and now it will the plastic will set into place. And I think we've got our completed bar. We just got to trim it to fit. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of tr trim it to fit to the marks I got here where I want it. And uh, we're ready to go. There we are. It's all trimmed to fit. There's my roll cage. And uh, because there's notches here, I might not have to fish mouth it. You see how there are notches for the, the kit crossbar here. Let's see how this fits in here. And we may not have to notch it. Now, I'm not going to fish mouth or notch it. It's just a flat portion, so I can just get that in there. So I'm going to get this glued in. That is now permanently on there. And let's see how it fits into the body. And as we can see... And there I dumped my accelerant. You see why? <laughs> oh, God. You guys got to see it right there. That's why you always close these up before you move on. And mad. Let's get back to this. So, we got this all fitted into place. I like how this is. This is Once it's in place, it'll be straight across. Keeps wanting to slant, but this is pushed forward and this is pushed back. When this is all mounted into the, into the car, we like how that is. That's pushed apart the way we like it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this back one to measure out the same as that one. Do a little dab. Take our accelerant and clink. Let's test fit into the car. Oh yeah, I like how it looks. That's exactly where we want it. So that is going to give us, look at that, look at how nicely formed that roll cage is to the body. That's going to look a heck of a lot more natural. Our next step is to get all that glued into place, into the body, and get it separated from the rest of the cage. But I need to do some work on this aid pillar. I'm going to remove this bar here and try to integrate it more into the chassis. I think what I'm going to do is here and get ready to cut this all off and start applying it into the body. Okay, so I've got our roll cage into my mock-up chassis and I had to put some tape on there to make sure it all fits right because now with the roll cage widened at the top it kind of pushes stuff out of whack so I had to get those into place and we can see it's all pretty pretty square I like how it's looking and now I'm going to fit it up into the body to make sure we really got the correct fit let's get that up in there we got the roll cage in there everything's fitting nice wheel wheels are into the body at the right point and we can really see how that cage is fitting Look at that, that's going to be all nice up against the body the way we want it. That is definitely going to be a nice look. It's fitting up there really good. Excellent. We're going in the right direction, I can see. And then when we get our filler panels in there, that's going to look really cool. And what my thinking is, is once I have this all down with the top of the roll cage, a part of the body when it comes down it'll fit down through here into the dashboard and you won't see that but it might be a little bit of an issue back here we got to figure out what we can do with that spot right there because that's where the roll cage will be separated from the from the chassis and the bottom half of the chassis so when that comes up they've got a touch and you can't see a seam so I've been doing a little eyeball engineering and kind of figuring in my head and as we can see because of the movement of all this stuff we've got this bar that needs to be completed up to there and I was thinking at, before I cut this I might have to add this piece I won't glue it to there but it's going to have to fit to that really good so I'm going to add a piece of, of tubing to extend that 
I've also thought about as far as like the bar that goes up there I'll probably just use a fresh piece and fabricate it and it's going to be kind of tricky because it's going to be a whole lot of I can't do that till I have the chassis assembled and the lower half of the roll cage is assembled and the upper half up into the body to where I can fit everything and that's where my mock-up chassis is going to come into play really good. Whew, this is turning into even a little more than I thought it would be but uh, we're going to just concentrate on how it all looks up inside here for this episode and uh, Let's get this part of the roll cage up into the body. We gotta still do some body prep. So what I've done with this bar that goes up and meets the roll cage up here is I went ahead and took a piece of stock that I cut from some of the roll cage I cut off of here. So this is actually a kit roll cage so it would match up a little better. And I went ahead and just spliced some in. I glued it, took my pin vise and I drilled in between those two so that I could put a piece of wire in there to use as an alignment peg and get it nice and stretched and I put a lot of CA glue in there and filled it up and put some accelerant in there and I got myself a nice extended piece of roll bar here and what I'm going to do is now we want to kind of get where this is going to terminate up into the, the side of the roll cage right there which will be a part of the body and this will stay down on the lower portion of the chassis. And I got a mark there of how I want to cut that roll bar. I, the off camera I went and I cut it right where the line was at and it kind of popped right into place naturally and we've got our extension. It will fit pretty good. See that right there? It'll fit up there pretty good and I think when we get that all together um, it's going to have a little bit of a gap. We might be able to do some mending when we do final assembly. So there we've got that bar extended. Okay, so I cut this all off of the A pillar there and on the other side here. So let's uh, fit this up there and see where the roll cage sets. Get this all lined into place. Now we see how the roll cage is next to the A pillar and now I'm going to make my own sheet plastic to connect the the roll bar to the A pillar there and probably up in here and we're also going to have to figure out what we're going to do about a windshield. I don't really like the glass that came with these kits because it fitted from behind compared to how the older monogram NASCARs were where the windshield came in from the front and laid in there and I think I'm going to try to make this to where we can make a windshield that fits into there. It just looks better and they're really thick and that's going to kind of ruin our look that we're trying to get right here. I kind of plotted out where I want to glue this into place. Now that I got that cut away, I think what we're going to do now is work on getting the roll cage separated, the top portion separated from the bottom portion and we'll go ahead and start gluing it into the body. I'm just going to use a good old-fashioned exacto blade and kind of do it cannibalistically right there. This will be below the line of the dashboard. I'm just going to cut around it like that. Yeah. We're just kind of cutting the groove in and, and I don't go all the way through and then it just breaks loose and it's nice and straight as you can see. It's kind of that same technique of what I use with the rolling the tube on the ground just going across it with the exacto blade except we can't do it with the roll cage. We got this all separated and there we go. Basically how we got it fitted. I drew lines there where I wanted it to be and that's where we're going to glue it. The one thing about this is I've had problems when I've used this red ink when I go to paint and I'm thinking the interior is going to be white. This might show. I know it's going to be up on the roof but I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to use my exacto blade to kind of scribe the lines that I want to follow. We 
got that. I kind of got this into place where I want it, and I'm going to go ahead and just touch, I'm going to touch right up in there and there. That's exactly where I want those two points to be. Drive a little accelerant in there, and that should put that part of the roll cage right in the right spot. Should look good on both sides. Just what we want right up against the roof line there. That'll all get filled in and up into there. I think we're all in place there. Let's do a test fit with the mock chassis. Move some stuff out of the way. Got our mock up chassis, but I'm putting the lower half of the roll cage that we're using. This is the kit roll cage, the white. And it looks like wheels are in their proper location for the wheelbase to be. That's how the chassis will sit in there. Um, and if you look down in there, can you see down in there? It looks like everything touches in the right spot. Just might have to move it a little bit, which it's all pretty movable. You get down in there, you get down in there, and you can kind of put that into place. Look at that. I think that's going to work really well. So I think my idea is coming together. And you won't be able to tell that the upper portion of the roll cage is part of the body and we have our roll cage lower portion like that. We glue all up into here so I guess we got these right where we want them. So I'm going to go ahead and glue everything in. So now that we got that in before I start filling all that we also got to put that one down bar that goes right here. So I'm going to where I figured where the top of the door bars go right up in here if you can see where the bar was molded onto the body originally there's still that mark where it was at so I'm gonna just kinda basically take my rat tail file and file a round piece right into there where I can stick a piece of roll bar through there and connect it to the A pillar and just work and there we got a little half moon spot and that's gonna be good for the roll bar so I'm gonna take a piece of just regular stock evergreen that's the same circumference as the rest of the roll cage. I've used that. And you can see it fits into that little slot that I filed in. And we'll figure out how long we want it to be. And it's going to go right up. I'll probably cut it at an angle. And it'll go right up into there. And we'll fish mouth it and glue it right to the A pillar bar. So there we got it all fitted up in there. See how it goes into the door right there. And we're going to be building up some sheet plastic into here and connecting the A-pillar to the A-pillar roll bar. I'm going to do a quick test fit with the windshield with that roll bar in there. And it goes up inside the body on these. Fits up in there. And it fits in quite good. So one thing that I see, I don't know what I'm going to do about the filling in of the windshield post from this side. I might just do it on that side to get that look from out here. Which is kind of more important to me. With The windshield's kind of in the way of doing the A-pillar from the front, but I don't think you're going to really notice it anyways. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. I might have to cut down the windshield a bit on the sides then if I do that. Because uh, if I don't have to fabricate a new windshield, I'd rather use the kit one. I really would. And that's where I'm going to end this video at. Just wanted to show you a little thing I'm doing. And maybe you picked up some roll bar fabricating tips. And uh, we're going to do more of those here soon. And you can see we got that in there real good, that A-pillar. That looks a lot better than the molded on one that was on the body. We'll bring you some updates on this project. But before we go from here, let's do one last test fit onto the mock-up chassis. And we'll put the body on. 
See how everything fits and lines up good? It looks pretty good. There it is. There's the roll cage. Let's do a quick set down of this thing. Let's take a look at it from the side. So there we go. That's pretty much... There it is. That's the look I'm going for. I'm getting pretty pleased with this. I think I'm going to probably when I start building the chassis for this kit, I'm going to do something a little different with the dashboard because it doesn't quite fit into this car that well. And that is more designed to fit the old Ford Thunderbird. So I got an idea for that we're going to fix. There's something that the Ford kit that I'm using, it was a later model Thunderbird, the 8990 Thunderbird. I took from that kit and they had these dashboards that fit on top of the kit dashboard, the, the, the kit chassis dashboard, to fit the updated body. And I think I'm going to rework this dashboard to fit into this car. I think it's going to work out really well. Something like that. But when I get to building the chassis, that's when I'll do that. Meanwhile, we're just in the mock-up stage and figuring out. We're still doing a little bit of engineering. And I think we got it where we want it for now. So what you think? Was that pretty cool? I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something from that. Um, I'll do more stuff on that build later on. Again, this is, not, this is not the first part of a build. I just wanted to show you what I did and what, how I'm probably going to do a lot of my NASCAR builds now. I have always wanted to have that that uh, uh, top of the cage up all formed into the body like that and I think this is the best way to be able to get that that look again I want to thank you guys for watching and remember what I always say here this is me Lucas C keep gluing those fingers together and keep cutting that styrene and we will see you in the next video and here are my producers <laughs>